My name is Barbara Wanjiko, an agronomist by profession, passionate about farming, and this is my watermelon crop production masterclass. Hello students, my name is Barbara Wanjiko. I am a graduate of Bachelors of Science in Horticulture from Egerton University, Kenya, and a Master of Science degree in Crop Sciences from Tel Aviv University. I have experience dealing with many crops, and today we are going to talk about the watermelon plant. Watermelon is a vine plant that grows and spreads on the ground. The fruit is green on the outside and the inside is mainly red but we have some varieties that can either be yellow or orange. The fruit is made up of about 90% being water and that is why it is a preferred fruit especially to quench the dust. You may be wondering why it has gained prominence in the contemporary society recently. This is because of its refreshing taste and so it has been utilized in very many occasions like say in parties, in events where it has been consumed in salads or in pickles or can even be eaten as a raw fruit. In some communities the watermelon reed is cooked to make it edible. Development of urban centers and cities have provided a ready market for watermelon and this has enticed many farmers to grow watermelon for business. The fruit is packed with an array of benefits and these include minerals like vitamin A, vitamin C and B6. The fruit is rich in potassium, a component that is very important in controlling of the blood pressure and preventing strokes. This in turn has become a popular thing among the doctors in recommending watermelon as part of the diet for these patients. Being a nutritious fruit, it is preferred by the vegetarians as a component in their diet. The fruit is rich in amino acids, folate, and other components like lycopene. Lycopene is packed with antioxidants that are important in prevention of diseases like cancer. The plant is very nutritious and also low in calories. Watermelon is a plant that is very easy to produce because it involves less labor and takes a shorter time to mature. Depending on the variety, the watermelon plant is ready after 75 up to 100 days. During this course, we are going to look at how to produce the watermelon fruit. You start from the seed selection up to the point you get to harvest. With seed selection, we have to look at the seeds that are available in the market. We compare between the hybrid and the non-hybrid ones. We need to look at the water. The water, we need to consider the quality of water we are using and look at irrigation in case the rainfall is not enough. With water, you have to look whether the farmer is going to depend on the rainfall or is going to choose the irrigation way. With irrigation, we have to look at the methods to be used, whether it's furrow irrigation, whether it's drip irrigation, or whether it's overhead irrigation. And the water to be used has to be of quality. So we are going to look at the sources of this water, be it a borehole, be it a river, or maybe a dam or anything else. Once we are sure about our water, we now get to the actual business of land preparation. Under land preparation, there's one thing we have to be sure of, and this is the history of the land. The history spans from what was grown before, that is if it was watermelon plant or another crop. Agronomists do advise crop rotation to make sure that we break the pest and the disease cycle in any farm. This means 
that you don't have to repeat the watermelon where it was planted before. Preferably, we need a crop from a different family, be it tomato, be it onion or kale family. Another thing with the history is to know whether the place is prone to erosion. And this can be possible by asking those people who are nearby or even looking at the land itself. We prefer a gentle sloping topography in order to avoid any erosion. But in case a place is prone to erosion, we need to look at the measures to control or to avoid any occurrence of the soil erosion. Why do you look at the soil erosion? This is because soil erosion will carry away all the topsoil that is full of minerals and humus that is important for, this, for the crop growth. Another thing to look at is the soil fertility. Soil fertility is supposed to give you the components that are available in the soil. There are many guidelines to know whether the soil is fertile or not. And one of them is by the type of soil to be used. Another thing is the available weeds in the area and also looking at the crop that was grown previously. Good example is where the legumes were planted, there was some nitrogen fixation that can be able to give you a guide on whether the soil is fertile or not. These are just measures that are used locally, but the best method to show the fertility level in any soil is by doing a soil analysis or a soil test. The soil test is able to give a guideline on the nutritional levels, the organic matter content, pest and disease presence, alkalinity or acidity of the soil, the cation exchange capacity, among others. After we are sure of what is available in our soil, we now go ahead to do the bed preparation. The bed preparation involves general plowing, harrowing in order to attain a medium tilth, and doing the furrows. After bed preparation, we now go to planting. Under planting, we're going to look at the manure application, the spacing, plant population, and the planting techniques. After the planting, we go ahead to the starting stage. At this stage, we look at the nutrition that is needed at this stage. Here we supply what the plant needs at this stage. Then we get to look at the pest and disease at this stage. Since the plant is very young and may not have the energy to fight enough, it is very important to control any presence of any pest or disease. From the starting stage, we now go to the vegetative stage. At the vegetative stage, we have to supply enough nutrition since this is a stage that is characterized by the spreading of the vines. With the spread of the vines, there is an increase in the vegetative cover. This vegetation may act as a good housing for any pest and disease. Therefore, it is very important to do the scouting in order to control any pest and disease presence at this stage. From the vegetative stage, you go to the flowering stage, where we have the flower initiation stage. At the flowering stage, we look at the bee presence. Bees are very important insect at this stage in order to ensure we have enough pollination. We also look at the nutrition in order to make sure we supply enough nutrition that will give the plant the energy to carry the flowers to the fruiting stage. Any pest or disease at this stage should be controlled to make sure we don't have any flower abortion. From the flowering stage, now go to the fruit initiation and fruit expansion stage. We look at the nutrition where we need to apply the necessary nutrient components at this stage. The pest should be controlled and the disease should also be controlled. After the fruit expansion, we now go ahead to the maturity stage. At this stage, we have to look at the irrigation regime and control of any pest or disease presence. Once our fruit are mature enough, we have to harvest. Here we have to look at the maturity indices in order to know which ones are ready and which ones are not yet ready. We have to look at the harvesting techniques, the harvesting period, and any crop management to be done after the initial harvest or the second harvest. After harvesting, we look at any post-harvest 
handling that has, has to be done to this crop and any storage. You also have to consider different markets and also the transportation way. We also have to look at any value addition that can be done on these fruits. After all this, we have to do the economics in order to know if this business is profitable or not. This will involve looking at the production cost and all the essentials that are incorporated in the farm, getting the gross margin, subtracting them, and then we get to know whether the business was profitable or not.